Man, I met Burn One through Gorilla Zoe and Block ENT, Big Block. And uh, he was up there working on the mixtape for a Gorilla Zoe. Gorilla Zoe was doing 28 mixtapes in 28 days. And I was on one of the mixtapes. And me and Burn One were just outside talking to what up. We was like, yeah, we gotta do some work. Woo woo. So like a couple months had went by. And we was online, you know, on Twitter, and we was tweeting and shit. And he was like, man, we gotta do some work. So I linked him up with my manager at the time. And we set up a session. The first session we set up was for a song called Hustling. That was like our first time getting together. And I remember being in there with him. I did the record. And the first verse, he was like, man, I think you can do a better first verse, you know? I went to the crib and after working with him, like he had a he has a whole band. So what what a lot of people don't know is like when Burn One producing the record, it's not just him making the beat. You know what I mean? He got his guitarist, Ricky Fontaine, playing the live guitar. He got Walt Live playing the live keys. He got his bass drum, you know what I'm saying? His drummer and shit. He got everything in there. So I had never seen that before. You know what I mean? For me, it was just coming from working with producers, either just making it or sending emails, you know? So when he, when I saw him do that, man, I was blown away. I went back to the crib, man, and talked to my homies. Like, man, I think I want to do a whole CD with dude. You know what I mean? Like, he got that sound I need. And we did. I really wanted to be produced as an artist. You know, I feel like that's like a shortcoming of a lot of artists. We don't want to be produced. Like, we don't want nobody to tell us, hey, man, you could have went harder, you know, or you could have said this part here or said it different. You know, like, that's something that I still kind of like, like about working with Burn One or like DJ Toon because they're not afraid to tell me what they really think about certain parts of the song, you know, to make the song better in general. But when I first started, it was just that, you know, I remember me and Burn One would be at his crib or at the other little studio they had, and we would be making like three or four songs a day, you know what I mean? Just sitting in there, doing, just cranking our records. And so now it's a little different, you know, like I actually try to take my time with the records. I might not make as many songs in the day, but I might make one or two and just make them super quality. You know what I'm saying? Just try to make the best one I can make. And then as far as like the production goes, I do have a lot more say so on the production. You know, I, I'll get in and be like, yo, I think we should do this at the beat right here or take this part out or add this part or add this sample. You know, I could just hear different things that a producer might hear as well. But me and Sai How the Prince went to school together. We went to Redan. When I met the homie, he wasn't rapping. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was he was definitely, uh, he was dancing. He was into, into music and stuff like that, you know what I mean? But I didn't find out he was rapping until later. DJ Greg Street told me about this dude. Man, you need to uh, check out this dude, Saha the Prince. And I'm like, man, who is that, man? You know? And uh, he played it for me, and, and I find out who he was later. And I was like, man, that's my homie, man. But shout out to Saha, man. He doing his thing. We, we, we are friends, though, for sure. I was born. Outside of Chicago, on the north side, in a town called Waikiki. My mom and my dad actually was living here for a while. I moved to Atlanta, though, when I was three. So ever since I could talk, you know what I'm saying, I've been in Atlanta. My mom and dad, like, my dad used to stay, like, in Milwaukee. And uh, my mom was in Waikiki. Funny thing is, I came out to Chicago to record an EP with Prolific and Soundtrack a couple years ago, and they were staying in Gurney which is right right around the corner from Waukegan. So I was able to go to my mom's old house while I was out here recording. It was dope. You know, I used to see guys getting beat up and cops shooting at you know, innocent black men and doing things to us kids just for no reason. We could be walking from a football game in a pack and they come in and roughing us up. So like when I kind of went solo, People was like, oh, that's Cap from the group, you know, and that's where my name, Cap G, come from. It's from my group, Kids at Play, stands for Cap. His attitude towards us had been developing into a fuck y'all, because he felt like he had driven for, like, some bands back in the day, like Led Zeppelin or some shit, I don't remember. That's another reason why I love soul music. Soul music is a feeling, make you forget the problems, the bills, the bad kids, the tripping baby mama, the tripping baby daddy, the, the, the passing of your mother, the passing of your father. Soul music just lets you enjoy that moment right then and there.